Hello there, welcome. It's Dromai versus Katsu. A bad matchup for the illusionist, or is it? So, from my experience being a Katsu player, Dromai can be quite easy or very difficult, depending on the pilot. And it doesn't actually matter if it's a big dragon or a red on Dromai list. Either way, they can make you struggle quite a bit. And what I've learned is that the thing I'm doing here is especially annoying. Just building a board with high HP dragons or flooding the board with multiple dragons at the same time. That way Katsu won't be able to clear them all and leak some damage. Also, if Katsu is throwing his power cards into those dragons, he's not actually gaining any, any value out of them in terms of life difference. So he is even fatigable. Of course, Katsu's playing the Mask of Momentum, which can get him an extra card every time he's throwing attacks into dragons. But even that extra card means he doesn't have an advantage. It's just something he will trade against our dragon. His first Kodashi went into the Yenderai counter, which means it's not a hit. And the second one went into us. I contemplated blocking, but decided against it. Because we can get more value out of our cards here than just blocking one. The second, the second attack is just a dishonor. It happens that Droma and uh, Katsu sent are kind of clunky and he can't really convert them very well. So as I said, we're just building a big board here if he doesn't clear the Enderai. And then we're able to go in full steam ahead. Katsu's only running three poppers basically always. Unfortunately, he had one now. Makes it a little bit easier for him to clear our board. Redland Droma has the advantage of being able to force very good attacks even beside the dragons. So we can get hand cards or his HP from him while he needs to keep cards to clear dragons. Kind of unfortunate we didn't draw into any, any more dragons so those two will basically die on their own now. I am pretty sure I should have just two cut blocked or maybe blocked with one equipment here it's because with this honor he'll very likely I mean yeah he'll he'll get a draw even if he throws that into a dragon now on the other hand the katsu draws can be awkward as well if he's drawing a blue here it doesn't do much for him I will just keep pushing damage at this point. I kept my hand with the idea in mind that I still had a board of dragons, which I want to use as a pressure point. It might have also been correct to just block way more here. Because then fatigue actually also becomes an angle. As of yet, he already used one bonds, and yeah, you could say it's only one bonds, but he has a limited amount of those. If he uses those clearing dragons, that doesn't mean that in the end he might not be able to kill us, especially because we're running a lot of three blocks, a lot of directs, and the sigil of solaces. And I also have our balance of justice to sort of buff out those big art of war turns. 
Him patching Whelming Gust by fear basically means he has a natural combo in his hand. So we are not really... It's not necessary for us to force this, force this uh, Searching Strike shot. But I still just want to get out as much damage from this thing as possible. Now, I didn't expect him to crack those here. Um, so I did not overblock, and I think still think that's correct, because this way he doesn't get a very big hand, it just slightly fixes his turn. Though, what I'm noticing is that you shouldn't probably crack the Seeker Smiths in this matchup early. You can just keep them around for a situation is exactly like this. Because if he was to crack his, his gloves, I can just crack mine in response and nothing happens. Of course, that means that I will struggle with Ash in the beginning and maybe I'm not able to build a board like I did. Something else to keep in mind is that we would be able to crack the balance of justice now. I don't think it's necessary. Our turn can just be throw, throw the dust up. And we're at least on, on life parity still. And then we even got rid of his annoying equipment. So I'm not too uncomfortable. He's controlling the full line though. With a searching strike. A descending guest wave later on. And a bonds. So we need to block out the dishonor that is coming. But that's what we got our armor for. actually decide against throwing the dust up. I think just throwing the Enra is fine. With burn them all it's also for damage and we keep our arsenal. So our hand is I'd say a little unfortunate. As I said, Katsu can break, especially on a four card hand, it's unlikely that he'll he'll draw many cards from us. So, but we are still forced to just use the sand completely defensively. Once again, Katsu pitching Whelming Gust with here, so we know he has something natural in hand. I'll just take out as much damage as I can this turn. And throw back the end dry. If he lives, let it, let it live, otherwise we still got the dust up. Uh, he threw the Whelming on, onto, his, onto our dragon, so that's a free draw for him, while we don't have to worry about four of his damage. I am actually fine with this trade. And we got out the reacts to cover this up now. Since he cracked, no wait, since he drew two cards right here and the game is kind of closing in, I decide on 
getting the balance of justice quick into into my hand. So I can just deny three more damage. Or get another arsenal card. I'm also contemplating letting this Winds of Eternity hit, but as I said before, fatigue can be an angle. I don't want him um, getting threads back into his deck, so I'll just block this out. And now we're actually up in HP. Considering those stitches of Solus. We still have that burn them all on, on board, which will be very, very huge in later turns. And we get the dust up to hit. Now, you don't want to make that a single Ashwing here. Because one single Ashwing can give him a mask activation really for literally free. So that's not the way you do it. He's ripping a blind ancestor harmony thing. So we should kind of expect a bit more damage this turn. Okay, that's only a, a, a yellow 100 wins, so easy for us to block out. And I'd rather do so than, than get Chroma and Miragai on board, because they're not as important in this, this matchup. Last of is unfortunately coming in for five because of the ancestral harmony. That's okay. It's still, as I said, life parity. We can throw a four attack, even threatening a draw, which would be a one card seven. Or we get two of his cards, making his turn way worse. Now that's some dragons, and also dragons we want to play out, while Katsu doesn't really have anything going for him this turn. So this is a really nice pivot point for us. If I look back at this, I want the sink below an arsenal, and I'll probably just play out Chromai and Azulai. Sure, Thermal would be better to have on board in theory because he has more, or they have more life points. But not having a sink, or rather having a sink in Arsenal, is, uh, has us setting way more comfortable. In a closing game, this is that's very more important for us. They can't like just overpower us in one turn. We eventually win. So unfortunately, the next command and conquer here. means one popper left if I count it correctly. Then we get our ash back from Thermai. Get some HP back and then put the sink below an arsenal and now we start slowly chipping them down with arcane damage. Okay finally they get an out of four so now it's getting a bit spicy. Very good, we kept the sink below. And yeah, unfortunately we get two of our two blocks here. 
So if they draw well, this can actually become uncomfortable for us. Now I'm thinking about just perfectly blocking this out for five with the direct and flame scale, for example, or with a with two or three blocks. But if they do have something else in hand and they make a long turn out of it, that could actually be game losing. So I'd rather let this hit because they might get the search anyway and block out the more important stuff. Also, if we keep looking into his, his grave here, that's because he's actually very, very low on, on bonds of ancestry. I believe there's one left as of now and maybe a blue one if he's running with them. So if I believe, if I'm, if I'm, no, actually he drew into this from the alpha four, so he might have not had anything natural in his hand. Okay, we can perfectly block this out without having to worry about him pumping it. And then we deny the mask trigger for the whole turn. If I was lower here, I might need to take the risk of just blocking out the searching strike for six. I think in this situation we would have been fine playing it that way. Now we're getting five from the bonds. Then I believe he's searching up a fluster fist after that, so five more. Which means we definitely need to block here. And if we only block with flamescape furnace, we drop down to one, which means Kodachi lock, that which is something we don't want to experience. So I rather block with with a few more cards here. In hindsight, last step in flame scale might be the correct block, so we can throw eight into the um, into the dragon then. But we can use the flame scale furnace later too, so that's fine. Right, and now we are pressuring his life total extremely hard. I'm playing it this way because he knows Azula is coming and I'm still hiding the fact that there's another 4 attack. Now with his armor he can still keep a 3 card hand on us with us on 2 HP so that can, can, can get kind of, kind of scary. That being said... If he doesn't clear Azulai, he does the arcane damage. So after this, there's only a Fluster Fist coming. Unfortunately for him, he didn't have two blue cards with zero pitch, so he can't actually throw Kodachis. I think it's a mistake by him not, not using the Ancestral Harmony to pitch. Because if he did, well, if he did, okay, if, to be fair, if he did, he didn't have the Fluster Fist incoming, only two, two Kodashi, so probably doesn't matter anyway. But we can just clean block this out. Might as well throw the Flame Scale Furnace in there as well now. And then if flame, if the Fluster Fist goes onto us, that's also an easy block and he dies to Azulai. If it goes onto Azulai. We are able to play out the belonging mirage attack with a um, with an ashwing. Or oh, actually, we can just because we still have snap dragons up. We can lead off with that, make it very uncomfortable. And yeah, that's it for him. So yeah, not that scary a matchup actually if you piloted it very carefully. Be a little on the defensive side, and they don't high roll you obviously. Yep. So with that being said, I hope I see you next time.